Hello, Tob. I'm Candice Perkins. And I'm Seth Fairchild. Bisconnect TV is Lakana Chokma. Welcome to this month's episode of Bisconnect TV. For this episode, we're going to introduce you to some successful chattas using their talent for leading, painting, and storytelling. Now, here's reporter Kendra Germany with the Chukta from ECU who's making history. On March 1st, the Regional University System of Oklahoma named Dr. Katricia Pearson as the ninth president of East Central University. I'm Katricia Pearson, president at East Central University. East Central University is a regional university and we serve around 4,300 students. Um, any given semester, we have about 350 Choctaw students here. It's uh, our largest um, tribal affiliation, and we try to provide the services they need to be successful. Um, East Central covers the 11 counties essentially around us. That's our service area. But we're also in Durant. We have a nursing program in Durant and Ardmore. I went through the selection process to be a good president. I didn't think about being the first woman president, but um, that kind of adds to that humility. There are a lot of women who look to me now to help pave the way, and that's what I plan to do. It's very humbling because there are a lot of people who are dependent upon me. Um, this is a great place to work. I want to continue to make it a great place to work. We have students who um, are dependent on ECU to be here for them and to provide a great education, and that's what we're going to do. I came to ECU July 2011. Um, I came from William Woods University, a private institution in Missouri. A position with the, as an assistant vice president came up, and it was similar to what I was already doing. Applied, came down, I did that for a few years, became provost, uh, vice president of academic affairs, um, served there almost two years, and then applied for the presidency, and, and I'm going to start that journey. We've started two new degree programs. We started a master's in management. We started a water resource and policy management. Those are both graduate programs. And then we started the OCA Institute, OCA being the Choctaw Chickasaw word for water. And we're looking at sustainable practices uh, to serve the state of Oklahoma and the nation. The best part about being president is the students. Um, I get to see them achieve their dreams. In fact, at commencement, I'm on stage and I get to hand the diploma to them. And many of these students um, I have taught. And so four years ago, I saw them in beginning freshman English. And now I get to see them walk across that stage and start the rest of their life. For more information on East Central University, visit ecok.edu. This is Kendra Germany reporting for BTV. You know, Seth, it's so great to hear the stories of our many Chuktas out there. You're absolutely right, Candace. And Tina Furquin is going to introduce us to an artist from District 9. Oklahoma has a storied past between good and bad events. Choctaw artist Neil Taylor has taken it upon himself to put some of those events on canvas. It's kind of a a challenge, uh, these historical paintings are uh, <clears throat> different kind of generalized aspects of Oklahoma history. It's really, Oklahoma has a unique history among the states. Neil's paintings capture different times in history, like Coronado's expedition through northwest Oklahoma, the Chisholm Trail River crossing, and he has even started a series on past Choctaw chiefs. The picture of George Hudson carrying his mother on the Trail of Tears has gotten more response than just about any painting I've done. Neil's artwork can be found in the newly published historical text, The Oklahomans, written by John J. Dwyer. What we wanted to be the greatest treasure trove of historical artwork ever in an Oklahoma history book. In fact, uh, uh, Tina, at the, after writing volume one, I spent over a year working just on the illustrations. Uh, the idea was not just to find an illustration for a particular person or topic, but to find the best 
one available uh, that, that has been done so that when the reader opens the book, uh, they'll be uh, fascinated by that and that the artwork will both reflect and drive forward the, the narrative text around it. It will help tell the story. It's an honor and uh, I guess there's a little bit of immortality <laughs> gained there. Uh, I, it just kind of justifies my vision of things that needed to be done. I felt like uh, needed to be illustrated in Oklahoma history and uh, it's nice to know that somebody else feels the same way about it. The book, along with Neil's artwork, helps share the rich history of Oklahoma which is being told by Oklahoma natives for Oklahomans and anyone else interested in the state's past. I'm Tina Farquain reporting for BTV at the Donald W. Reynolds Community Center and Library in Durant. The Oklahomans can be found on Amazon or johnjdwyer.com. Check to storyteller Tim Tingle has many honors to his name and in March he added another award to his long list. On March 4th, Tim Tingle was honored with the Festival of Words Writers Award at the Hardesty Library in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The award included a $5,000 honorarium and a crystal trophy. Tingle's novel, House of Purple Cedar, won the 2016 American Indian Youth Literature Award. He was the featured author and speaker at the 2014 National Book Festival in Washington, D.C., after receiving acclaim for How I Became a Ghost, which won the 2014 American Indian Library Association Youth Literature Award. The next book in the series, When a Ghost Talks, Listen, is scheduled for release in 2017. Focusing on Choctaw Chief Pushmataha, the book recounts the circumstances surrounding his mysterious death in 1824 Washington, D.C. Previous Festival of Words honorees include Choctaw writer and poet Leanne Howe. This is Ronnie Pierce reporting for BTV. You can see Tingle next at the annual symposium on the American Indian in Tahlequah on April 12th. The Choctaw Career Expo was held February 22nd in McAllister. Ronnie Pierce has the details on the day. Job seekers made their way to the Choctaw Career Expo on February 22nd to meet with employers and learn about available financial assistance. Today we have between 15 and 1800 people here on site. We have approximately 150 vendors. That's a combination of employers who are actually hiring, education and training facilities, as well as support agencies and support programs that are here to support our people as they get their education and move into employment. According to Mize, they're highlighting the need for more students to focus on STEM, or science, technology, engineering, and math. In addition to specific career fields such as transportation, law enforcement, manufacturing, and healthcare. It goes right along with our program, with the career development program. Our focus is to help the Choctaw people gain the education, training, skills that they need to be employable and to have great careers where that they can support their families and be self-sustaining in their families. This is Ronnie Pierce from the 10th Annual Choctaw Career Expo reporting for BTV. To hear more about this year's College Connect Scholarship winner, Jackie Jo Coe, see the April Bisconnect. Now we're going to hear from Seth, who's with Dr. Jason Regan, this month's Ask the Doctor guest. Thanks, Candace. I have Dr. Jason Regan for our Alicci E. Panaclo segment. Thank you, Dr. Regan, for being here today. Glad to be here. Dr. Regan is an ER physician, and he works at the Choctaw Nation Healthcare Center in Tallahena, where he has practiced emergency medicine for 14 years. That's right. Uh, so we have some people that have sent in some questions, our biscuit and readers, uh, th that we want to just pose to you and uh, see what you have to say about them. Sounds like, sounds like a good idea. Uh, for our first question, uh, it comes from Biscuit Nick reader Alexis. Uh, she says, I took the flu shot, but I still got the flu. Why is that? The biggest benefit of the flu shot is that it prevents bad, out, uh, bad complications from the flu. Uh -huh. what, what we actually do is we take the virus that we think is going to come around each year and kind of chemically chop it up or, or put inactivated components in it and inject that into somebody's body. And we kind of trick the immune system into thinking that they just got exposed to the real flu. So it, it gives your body a chance to kind of pre-make an immune response. So when you come in contact with the, the real flu virus, you, you may still get an infection, but usually you've kind of had this pre-made response. So you usually don't get near as sick 
your chance of being hospitalized or getting a secondary pneumonia is way less and most people just get through the illness a lot quicker. It uh, doesn't mean you won't get the flu, but usually it's not near as bad. And here's one from Zach who asked, what is a C. diff infection? Uh, th this is turning out to be a real problem across the country. Uh, C. diff is just kind of an acronym we use for a bacteria called Clostridium dif difficile, which you may have heard of that, you may not, that's okay if you haven't. But it's a bacteria that's in everybody's colon. It's there all the time. But it normally is kind of outcompeted with all the other bacteria that kind of reside in your intestinal tract. And so normally they kind of keep it suppressed. All the other, other bad bacteria and some of the good bacteria are all kind of competing with each other. Sometimes that balance gets, gets out of control and the C. diff may take over. And usually that happens if we've given somebody a bunch of antibiotics. It kills out all the good bacteria and all that's left is C. diff, Clostridium difficile, and it kind of takes over starts making a toxin, uh, can get into the bloodstream and make a person really sick and even, even die. Commonly what happens is we've treated somebody for a serious infection with some IV antibiotics or oral antibiotics, knocks out all the good bacteria, it takes over and that, that can pop up two or three weeks later or, or pretty close to the timing of the antibiotics itself. It, it may be not the day you're taking it, but maybe a month later where it kind of takes over and it's hard to kill. It's hard to kill it out or suppress it down to where everything takes back over. And um, there's a lot of complications and morbidity that go with that bacteria. And, and we're having trouble where that bacteria is coming resistant faster than we can mm -hmm. invent a new antibiotic to get it under control. So uh, that's the reason why we've been having a big push to try to not use antibiotics when they're not needed and to minimize the length of a course and to make sure we're very judicious and and, and use evidence-based treatments that work well and to try to prevent C. diff. Thank you again for being with us. Uh, really enjoyed uh, hey, it's great to talk. It's good to talk to you. I'm sure the, the viewers also enjoy that. And now here's Joe Jefferson with this month's construction update. Holy toe, this is Joseph Jefferson with your construction update. Colgate hosted a groundbreaking on February 28th for their new Choctaw Nation Independent Living Community. And Antlers hosted a groundbreaking on March 3rd for their community. This is uh, an initiative, like I've, I said the other day, of uh, this council, ourselves, of making sure that we provide services to our elders. We want to make sure they can live independently as long as they can. They can have this. They can have the wellness center. They can go to the community center, get a meal and all those types of things. And that's who we want to make sure and respect is our elders. And I appreciate this council here for investing throughout you know, in Colgate, we're doing this here in Antlers. We're looking at Broken Bow. We did Stigler. We're uh, going to be having a grand opening in Smithville, Oklahoma, I believe. Right, Kenny? Uh, here before long before our independent elderly side up there. And so I just appreciate them for what they're doing for our tribal members. And I look out here and I see Bobby and everybody else. And I appreciate the housing authority and staff. We get to come up with the ideas. They're the ones that truly implement it. If y'all would, let's give our employees a big round of applause for what they do for us. The progress of the new Chalk Donation headquarters in Durant is in full swing. The brick, mortar, and the Chalk Diamonds are making their debut, bringing the dream of an all-services facility for our members a reality. Also available on campus will be a walking track where you'll be able to take a refreshing walk around the lake or amphitheater which will overlook the lake. This is Joseph Jefferson with your BTV construction update. Here's a calendar of events for March. This Saturday on March 17th is the Shamrock Firefly Glow Run and Kick the Habit 5K Run in Clayton, Oklahoma. The race is scheduled for 6.30 p.m. For more information, contact Rebecca Nell at 580-775-2020. On March 21st, join us for the Travel Plaza Ribbon Cutting in Hevener at 10 a.m. Then on March 28th, there's a ribbon cutting for the Elder Living Community in Smithville. After that, a 1 p.m. groundbreaking in Broken Bow, also for an elder living community. And don't forget to join us for the Chukta Annual Easter Celebration at Tushkahoma. Easter egg hunts, lunch, and bunny pictures all start at 10 a.m. on April 8th. That's it for March, the wind month, or in Chukta, Malihashi. Hashi Mintipa e Chipinza Chiki.